Hello everyone, welcome back to EduTab. So today in this particular video lecture, we are going to cover your general awareness from January 4th to 6th. And this particular series of GA is important for RBI Grade B, NABAD Grade A, SEBI Grade A and the assistant examinations of RBI and NABAD both. So here you can see the various courses which are being offered by us. You can choose from the individual courses of RBI, NABAD, SEBI as well as the combo courses. Okay, and um, telling you about our previous results, you can see here that Tambad Grade Day 2018 examination, 26 of our students were selected while there were only 46 generalist seats. And uh, RBA Grade B 2018, 280 selections in phase 2 have already been made and uh, our students are going through the interview phase and we are expecting a great result even here. Now coming back to your lecture of the day, let's see what is your first news uh, starting from January 4th related to your general awareness section. Okay, so government has notified this high level committee for the implementation of the clause 6 of the Assam Accord. So keywords are here. First of all, this high level committee is important. Um, and secondly, this Assam Accord is itself important. So we'll, we are going to discuss that. Let us first see what is this high level committee. So this committee is to be headed by the former bureaucrat MP Bez Barua. This name is important. You must keep this in mind that this committee related to MP Bez Barua is related to the Assam Accord implementation. Okay, first thing is this. And secondly, and uh, now coming to our uh, clause 6 of the Assam Accord. See, uh, this Assam Accord basically uh, has this clause 6 which says that constitutional, legislative and administrative safeguards as may be appropriate uh, shall be provided uh, so as to protect, preserve and promote the heritage of the Assamese people. So it is related to the rights of the Assamese people and the committee is going to uh, examine the effectiveness of the actions of the government which have been taken since 1985 uh, uh, to implement this particular clause okay i will just tell you that this assam accord was actually signed in 1985 so from then till now whatever actions government has taken will be um, examined now through this committee and let me tell you the background see there is this citizenship amendment bill which uh, uh, has been passed by Lok Sabha recently. So uh, the government is planning to change the definition of the illegal migrants. So uh, the uh, minority people which are non-Muslim that is Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist, Jain, Parsi and Christians uh, when they belong to Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan, the three neighboring countries of India, they would be given the citizenship. So uh, this particular uh, amendment is seen to be the violation of the Assam Accord under which it was signed that uh, illegal mi which was actually against the illegal migrants in the state of Assam coming from Bangladesh. So are you able to connect this citizenship amendment bill to the Assam Accord and so as to appease them it is said that government has come up with high level committee. So three important things we have discussed here. So uh, let us quickly see about the Assam Accord. I've already told you it was signed on uh, 15th August and uh, it was signed between the government of India, Assam government and there is this very important organization. You must hear, you must have heard the uh, in news about this, All Assam Student Union. So this is a very active organization of students and they were the one who had signed this accord uh, on behalf of the people so now also they are agitating that they do not want this committee rather they don't uh, they want the uh, illegal by Bangladeshi migrants uh, to not stay in India so this is a kind of political scenario but all three important things we associated to this committee and this accord we have discussed that would be enough for you okay so now moving to your next news then so go green initiatives and in Indian Railways. So there have been uh, many initiatives taken by Indian Railways. Some of them uh, we have discussed here, the important ones. So let us see quickly. So Railway Ministry actually has the plan uh, to um, have the 1000 megawatt solar power by 2021. So this is the year the 1000 uh, megawatt solar power. So that means the train would be running rather than electrical energy, they would be running on the solar energy. So uh, this is important. Then wind energy plants have already been installed and mostly they are in Jaisalmer. So ja Jaisalmer is the basically area, the desert area of Rajasthan. A, a, a very large area of desert is related there. So there the energy plants are have been installed. And then uh, on the uh, railway stations, uh, LED lightning provision has been given. Another very important thing is that 
since 2015 the railway is actually blending the 5% biodiesel in the high speed diesel locomotive so this is important keep this in mind this particular 5% figure and apart from this i will tell you that um, related to this only the ministry has recently announced that the conventional coaches for the long distance journey would be replaced now with the modern lhb coaches so uh, these are the hoffman bush coaches which will uh, be replacing the conventional coaches in the long distance train so these are some important ones just do keep them in, uh, them in mind because they are related to making the indian railways environment friendly being uh, indian railways being one of the largest rail networks in the world okay moving on Okay, so National Nritya Shiromani Award has been uh, conferred upon to Anandita Niyogi. So uh, th uh, you can see in the picture here, Anandita Niyogi Anam is a name, and she is a Kathak dancer. Uh, now she is an Indian dancer, but she is based in USA. So she has been uh, um, honored with this National Nritya Shiromani Award, and uh, this award was conferred upon to her on the tenth Kathak Mahotsav. So this Kathak Mahotsav, you must know, it is related to the international dance and music festival so this um a festival has taken place in uh, uh, the millennium city that is gurgaon which is in haryana so um uh, you can read about anandita here particularly that uh, she actually is the first indian to serve in the board of the vis uh, consent dance council so um that is why uh, for her contribution towards the dance across the world she has been awarded this okay you read about this katak mahotsav here some important things i've mentioned and um, yes that would be it keep the name in mind anandita anandita niyogi anam okay another important news pakistan declares panj tirat site as the national heritage so this um, panj tirat site is actually considered to be important for the hindus and uh, pakistan has declared this site as of the national heritage importance so it is in the uh, province of the khyber pakhtunkhwa and uh, uh, it is in the northwestern pakistan so um, you can read about the history of uh, particularly this panj tirath panj tirath basically means the uh, five uh, religious places are there the five ponds are there basically so it is believed that pandu the, he was the mythical king the father of pandavas uh, is uh, considered to be so he belonged to this particular areas and hindus used to come to this pool for bathing and uh, though it was damaged in the 18th century by afghan a uh, durani dynasty but then later on it was again uh, uh, revived and worshiped uh, you in the picture you can see this is the image of the panj tirath now pakistan has decided to give it the importance uh, as national heritage so that they are going to preserve this particular religious place so that is a very warm step by pakistan okay so china's changi 4 mission has finally uh, touched down to the far side of moon uh, we have discussed about this changi formation in our earlier videos also so this news is here particularly because uh, this um, changi 4 has landed on the far side of the moon so it has landed on a crater called as von karman so you need to keep in mind that uh, there is this uh, far side of the moon which is unexplored till now and there is this crater called as von karman where this uh, uh, china's changi 4 probe has landed so um, the south pole of the moon called as the aitken basin spa has this crater von karman now changi 4 mission is a part of the larger lunar exploration you can see changi 4 the, the number 4 indicates that there were earlier missions also so 1 2 3 4 totally in, in all uh, six missions are going to be under this particular uh, changi mission so and this is the fourth one and uh, um it is concentrated on the surface operations you can see the uh, the next two missions would be uh, delivering the lunar soil and rock to the laboratories on earth the earlier ones one were only about the gathering of the data so this is a very ambitious project and with this project now china has become the first country to even attempt to touch the far side of the moon so and this is very important since this is the first time any country has tried to touch down and they have done so successfully uh, now this uh, keep this in mind about changi 4 mission and what is it associated to what is this von karman okay 
so next news is about uh, the nasa's mission of new horizons so uh, there was this new horizon mission of nasa for the ultima thule now ultima thule it is actually called as so uh, this mission has completed its flyby you can see in the image it is a recreated image by nasa that probably this is the ultima thule and uh, this is flying uh, fly by uh, the uh, what is this horizon mission i'm sorry about that so a horizon mission is actually flying by it so this ultima thule is a uh, earlier it was called as 2014 mu 69 later it was renamed to ultima thule okay so um i will tell you about this uh, particular ultima thule now see this is the most uh, distant object that humanity has ever visited so that means uh, the most distant object from earth and it is considered important because it is the fossil from the beginning of the earlier sol uh, solar system so do you see that if we have the remnants from the earlier solar system and we can uh, learn about them we can experiment about them then we'll get so much information about the solar system so that is why this is very much important now coming to your new horizons project see this was launched in 2006 to study uh, to do the study of the pluto system then when it completed it and it was still alive it was working well so it was decided to carry forward it for this ultima thule as well so now it has done uh, that also successfully and it lies from the earth the kuiper belt now kuiper belt is also important see it is basically um, a band of the dwarf planets which are um, further away from the planet pluto now it consists of the rocks icy debris etc and uh, uh, planet neptune is the one because uh, pluto uh, is uh, we are not considering it now so planet neptune uh, beyond it there is this kuiper belt and it comprises of so many objects so this was about new horizon then kuiper belt and particularly ultima thule so these are some very important things and all they are all these are associated to the nasa's project called as new horizon okay do keep all these things in mind and uh, uh, if you uh, understand these things well then that would be enough for you don't you don't need to go in detail more than this okay so chandrayaan 2 mission so india after the successful chandrayaan 1 mission is planning to launch chandrayaan 2 in the coming february so isro has said that they are they are uh, going to launch this in the month of february and uh, let us see this about chandrayaan 2 then so it's a totally indigenous venture it would comprise of an orbiter a lander and rover so india is actually planning to a uh, land their rover on the um, moon and uh, it will orbit the moon and uh, then finally perform the remote sensing on it so this is related to, uh, you must know that chandrayaan 2 is the second consecutive mission chandrayaan 1 was the first lunar probe and it was uh, operated till 2009 okay so almost after 10 years we are going to continue our chandrayaan 2 mission okay this is important as it is related to our own space agency isro so national entrepreneurship awards 2018 have been announced so let us see uh, some important details about this um, award so this has been organized by msde ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship and it was organized in the capital new delhi now this particular award was uh, organized to um, boost and encourage the culture of the entrepreneurship in india so um, 30 outstanding young entrepreneurs and 3 Eco ecosystem builders of the entrepreneurs have uh, received this award so just keep this in mind that it is actually you don't need to know the name of the 33 uh, entrepreneurs and this uh, builders etc just keep in mind uh, that this um, national entrepreneurship award is related to msde and to encourage the culture of entrepreneurship okay that would be it enough for you okay so andhra pradesh government has bagged this um, uh, award of from the central board of irrigation and power for their very important multi purpose project called as pollavaram project so andhra pradesh government has backed this award and uh, this pollavaram multi purpose project you can see in the picture here it is based on the river godavari now the, the category for this award was best implementation of the water resources project i will just tell you that this pollavaram project is a very important project uh, in the state of andhra pradesh and uh, 
it affects not only andhra pradesh but the few areas of odisha and chatisgarh nearby also okay just keep in mind that although it is in andhra pradesh and it is considered to be the lifeline of andhra pradesh but odisha and chatisgarh are also affected by it so it has been given the importance of a national status national project status by the central government and andhra pradesh itself is implementing this project at a very high uh, war footing so uh, yes that would be it. you can read about the central idea of the project that earlier to deviate the water from godavari to um, krishna basin it was decided but then it converted it was converted into a full fledged multi purpose project which is now running successfully and bagging awards also okay swachh sarvekshan 2019 this is very important so 2019 swachh sarvekshan has been launched in new delhi so uh, this year's uh, survey is important because it is going to uh, conduct the surveys across a record of 4237 towns so till now uh, this is the fourth survey so earlier three surveys as compared to them this is the highest number of towns and cities to be covered let me tell you another important thing that this swachh sarvekshan is for the towns and cities thus it is under the ministry of housing and urban affairs do keep this in mind we have another survey called as the swachh sarvekshan gramin so that is under the um, another ministry rural development that is not has has been released yet for 2019 so keep uh, uh, this in mind about 2019 okay so here you can read about the previous surveys also that uh, first time it was only for the 73 cities then uh, extended to 434 uh, the leap taken was in 2018 where more than 4000 cities were covered and now a number has increased from that also acha i also want to tell you one important thing is that this time the survey is going to be completely digital and is going to be uh, uh, conducted by a third party which is independent so government is not going to conduct it do keep this important point in mind yes that would be it let us see when the ranking comes we'll cover that here then uh, you'll be able to relate to it more Okay so first ever world braille day has been observed by the United Nations uh, the this day was celebrated on 4th January so the first official braille day you must know that the louis braille is the person who invented the braille script for the uh, visually impaired person for the blind who are not able to read so um or to honor him particularly his birth date January 4th is now celebrated as the world braille day that would be it okay so this is about the cyclones orange alert for andamans has been uh, released by the Inter uh, indian Meteor uh, meteorological department uh, due to the cyclone so for us the cyclone pabuk becomes important we have seen so many cyclones were there uh, if you are able to recall the names we have discussed them please do uh, mention below okay so coming back to the cyclone pabuk then so the center has issued this orange alert for the andaman and nicobar islands and uh, it is facing a threat of cyclonic storm pabuk now what are why is this orange alert We, uh, here i have mentioned for you so that you can relate to it that uh, when this cyclone alert is given for the first time that means uh, and there is a chance that the cyclone can come so that is yellow color is yellow um, alert is issued then orange alert means the cyclone warning so that means that people should get prepared now after the alert warning has been coming and finally the post landfall outlook is red that means when the landfall has been made by the cyclone then the red alert is issued okay so keep this in mind orange alert and this pabuk which is related to andaman nicobar islands because there were many um other cyclones also related to our um, uh, eastern coast only that is why this is important another dam project foundation stone of the mandal dam project has been laid so pollavaram we have just seen now we are coming to this uh, mandal dam project so um, it is also being called as the north coel reservoir now this um, coel reservoir i will just tell you is actually a tributary of son which is itself a tributary of the river yamuna so um, in the palamu district of jharkhand this foundation stone has been laid and uh, uh, i will tell you that this is important because there was this it was the the first foundation stone the project was started 
actually in 1972 but then there was this controversy be, uh, uh, between bihar and jharkhand because at that time these were not even the separate states so the project was stalled and now finally uh, the foundation stone has been laid and uh, it is expected to irrigate the um, areas of both bihar and jharkhand okay so mandal dam project related to bihar uh, and jharkhand so our last news is about the ease of doing business index um see this is important because uh, world bank's ease of doing business index has been released we have seen this uh, dipp had uh, released its ranking about the states doing their business and finally this uh, asia competitiveness institute which is based in singapore has come with ease of doing business index for india now they have in the ranking uh, placed andhra pradesh the newly carved state we can say andhra pradesh and telangana the bifurcation so uh, uh, at the top position so number 2 is taken by maharashtra followed by delhi so Uh, this asia competitive institute is basically a regional um, index so just that is why we have mentioned it here um are you able to recall the india's rank in um, the world bank ease of doing business index if yes please do let us know mention below and tell others also okay so we have covered all important news from past 3 days now we'll move on to your mcqs we'll discuss the mcqs and i would recommend you to solve those mcqs on your own okay so religious uh, the first question is religious place panj tirath has been in news where is it located so uh, you can just pause the video take your uh, take 10 seconds and uh, try to recall it Uh, the panj tirath is it in panj tirath is basically a punjabi uh, word uh, so is it uk afghanistan canada pakistan or nepal so this panj tirath is in pakistan which has given the status of national heritage to panj tirath now mandal dam project is associated to which of the following states okay so this we have recently just the last news it we have covered so it is associated to the state of it's not madhya pradesh neither kerala it is jharkhand see in the option we have only jharkhand I had uh, been there bihar and jharkhand together you could have chosen that but if there was only one option then you would have chosen jharkhand because it is actually in now in the state of jharkhand but going to benefit uh, bihar as well so jharkhand would be the right answer to the question for the first uh, ever time world braille day has been observed by un on which of the following days okay so th since this is the first ever world braille day so this becomes important and uh, the answer to this question is it's january 4th option b okay polavaram multi purpose project is associated to which of the following states so so many multi purpose dams projects in this particular video so this particular project is in the state of go through the options andhra pradesh telangana tamil nadu maharashtra odisha so our answer is option a andhra pradesh final question recently china's changi 4 has been in news a lot it is related to which of the following Uh, related to the probe of which of the following so it is associated see this is a bit typical question if you don't know about this changi 4 mission so it is related to far side of the moon we have seen that new horizons was related to pluto then uh, asteroid bennu has uh, we have discussed earlier osiris rex mission is there and uh, kuiper belt we have discussed what is it um, the belt which is uh, further away from neptune and it has all the icy objects and uh, asteroid belt okay so here are your solutions tally your score if you've solved them on your own uh, you can let us know about your score also so yes guys that would be it in case of any query you can just drop us a mail at hello@edutab.co.in i would recommend you to visit our website also and you can always call us and whatsapp us at 8146207241 
so yes that would be it guys if you like the video please do not uh, forget to click like subscribing to our channel and sharing this video i wish you all a very happy learning from the team edutap see you in the next video